What's up, my dudes? MXGP Pro 5. Let's get in here and talk about this, man. So I haven't really looked up too much on this, like all the you know, early speculations and all of the uh, revealed, you know, kind of, you can get real deep into it and figure out a lot of stuff on it, but I haven't really done that. I'm just doing my own kind of little speculations and some things I want to see in the next MXGP milestone game. Now, I'm not really sure if they're going to go down the road of like a MXGP Pro 2, or if it's going to be more like just a standard you know, MXGP5 arcade motocross game. Not exactly sure what roads are going to go down with that, but uh, they're definitely going to come out with some sort of game like this this summer, I would assume, like they have been doing for the past two or three years, right? So uh, first things first, I'm the realist. <laughs> no, first things first, track editor needed more than anything, okay? This is so important to have in your next MXGP, whatever kind of game it is, outdoor, your next outdoor motocross game, you have to have a track editor in it, okay? It, it's getting to the point where we just expect a in-game track editor out of a milestone game. Having it in your Supercross games, it's just expected now. And so when you come out with a motocross game like MXGP Pro that just doesn't have any track editor in it, it makes it feel completely empty, like way less effort was put into it. I mean, you have got to have a track editor. And I understand a track editor in an outdoor game is going to be a little bit more difficult to do in, than versus having it in a Supercross game where it's everything's in a stadium, you know, and you can just kind of piece everything together pretty uh, neatly and everything just works. It's going to be slightly more difficult to make like a motocross track editor, but you guys can do it. Come on now, Milestone. I know you can handle this, man. Like, just make it to where we've got a couple little outdoor areas. I'm not saying they have to be huge. I'm not saying it's got to be like crazy or anything. Um, but And you can still use the actually like putting pieces together sort of system, right? You can still use the same system that you use in your official Supercross games, but just with an outdoor area, you know, an outdoor setting. It would be like if you imagined like this whole track right here, right? But just totally flattened out and like, like you would... Uh, see in one of the stadium tracks on those official Supercross games with the track editor, but it's just outside. You know, that's the only difference. Then you're just building everything outside, and you would have to obviously have a lot more motocrossy style pieces to it. This is the simple way to do it, right? This is the... This is the, I would at least expect this to be in your next motocross game. Like, bare minimum, you need to have the, like the Supercross track editor, but but in an outdoor area, right? Um, now, if you want to get where you're really impressing me, start adding, like, real rut-type pieces and different kind of dirt pieces. You know how you've done the sand piece on Supercross 2, the official video game? Go in there and give us, like, different loam different uh, sand mix compound, brownie mix, hard pack compounds, really be able to make us, uh, give us that ability to make those totally different kind of track compounds on our custom tracks, and that'll really impress me. And if you get in there and give us the ability to put like trees in different areas and different cool off-track objects and maybe change the time of day on our custom track. So, you know, we got little palm trees off there in the distance. We can put them wherever we want them, put fence objects where we want them, you know, put lights where we want them to be if it's a nighttime track. Um, and you could still do that in a really simple, you know, you don't have to have some kind of crazy PC editor to do that stuff. That's all really simple stuff you could have in a, a console editor. Um, but you really need to have some sort of elevation object pieces, right? And I know you're capable of doing it because you did it in Supercross 2, the official video game with the pool piece that kind of goes downhill and then the the little piece that goes up in the stadium, the little like you Ben Talladega Monster Energy Cup piece. So you're obviously capable of making pieces that have elevation change. So we need some of that too in here and obviously more tabletopy jump pieces. And hell, why not throw in some Supercross pieces in there so we can make cool little outdoor Supercross tracks and hybrid tracks and mix it together with all the other pieces and stuff. But 
If you can do that in your next milestone motocross game, I promise you people will be twice as into it, dog. Like it'll be twice as good instantaneously if you have that kind of outdoor track editor in it. So super important for the longevity, super important for the games. Really need that to be the case in the next one. Okay. So the next sort of thing is I don't, like I said, I don't know if they're going down the road of MXGP Pro 2 or what, but I honestly think they need to kind of get away from that. Obviously, I'm always talking about these milestone games need to get more realistic. So don't get my words twisted. I'm not saying don't make it more realistic. What I'm saying is whatever the hell you try to do with MXGP Pro was not the right way, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know what you were trying to do. I don't know if you're trying to make kind of like a sim arcade little weird. I, I don't know. I have no idea. But it was not good, dog. <laughs> no bueno on that shit, dude. Like, we can't be having that. So you just need to focus on making a solid arcade motocross game, okay? Don't try to bring in these little simulator elements. Just make a solid, hardcore, more realistic arcade experience, but not, do not try to go to the extremes of making this, like, slide out in every corner, like, weird pop off the bike over a two-foot double. Come on now. You know, I, that's not what I'm talking about. That's more of a simulator, right? That's not what I mean. And even with, like, Reflex, it's a full-blown arcade game, even though it feels so realistic. So many different feelings, cool feeling, whip physics, ground physics, air physics, skill gap, everything Reflex has, it still feels like an arcade motocross game. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't feel like some weird arcade sim mix. Like, you're not going to pop off of a two-foot-tall jump on, on uh, Reflex. It's not going to happen, right? And you're not just going to slide out in every corner on Reflex either. So... That's what that's precisely what I mean by making a super skill gapped deep arcade motocross game that doesn't feel like a sim like a any sort of sim arcade mix, right? So that's what I'm getting at. Like you need to focus on like that right there. What the hell? You need to focus on making that that true deep full arcade motocross game. I, I feel like you need to get away from this whole pro whatever the hell you're trying to do with your games because that's not the right way to go about doing it man oh and by the way i don't know if i kind of forgot to mention this but with the track editor obviously you need whenever i say more motocrossy pieces i mean like breaking bump pieces that you can add and um you know not having to use like a whoop piece to try to replicate roughness like we have to do in the official supercross games but you know and then like inside rut pieces in the corners not just berm corners in every corner um, you know, you really need to get in there and make true motocrossy pieces, and that's going to make your track editor really feel like a full-blown experience and really being able to make different stuff and do all that. But, like, right there, over jumping a, a little small jump by 10 feet, come on now. That would not pop you off that bike in a hundred years in real life. It's like they try too hard. They try too hard to make MXGP Pro realistic, you know, and then it just didn't work because it's not even known as being a simulator. Or I mean, you know, milestone games are known as being some of the most arcadey feeling games we have out there as far as motocross games. So, um, you, I really think you just need to go back to what you know. Go to like more of a physics feeling of. The first official Monster Energy Supergross game, or the second official Monster Energy Supergross game, after it got updated, obviously, um, and then just advance on those physics, right? Or totally rip it down. You know, a lot of people have spoken about ripping down the Milestone physics altogether and building them from the ground up. If you really want to make a legendary motocross game, that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to completely rip the physics down and build it from the ground up again, because... It's just getting so repetitive, like the feelings of your games, it just feels like a 15% improvement on the next game, and that's about it. There's just not a whole lot different. You know, if you ever want to have that reflex legendary potential feeling on the bike and air physics and skill gap and all that and movement on the bike and hucking on the bike and the whole nine yards, you're basically going to have to rip your physics down. I mean, there's no other way to explain it. I mean, but I'm saying if you're not going to rip it down, you need to take more from your arcadey feeling like like uh, Official Monster Energy Supercross game and Supercross 2 after the whip update and all that and just advance that even more. Make that feel more realistic, not try to add these weird little pop-off over a two-foot jump systems and all this weird stuff that you got going on, right? So that's kind of point I was trying to make there. But also, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious, and I've said this about a lot of your MXGP games, you're going to have to advance your jumps, man. That That's one aspect of 
damn near every single track, even in MXGP Pro, every single jump just lackluster. I feel like it's a little, you know, five foot tabletop on every jump. Like there's just no jump skill. And this is where I've noticed you guys improve on with Supercross 2, the official video game. Probably one of the biggest improvements you made in that game was the jump skill gap and really feeling like you had to jump things properly and you were getting the more proper amounts of airtime, it felt like, and uh, stuff like that, you know what I mean? Um, that, to me, felt more like it uh, than, like, the first official Monster Energy Supercross game. It just felt like the jumps were nothing in that game. And with a lot of your motocross games, you've struggled on this aspect as well. Obviously, we know, we've known Milestone for having decent cornering physics. Not amazing, but decent, you know, rideable. But it's, it's their jump physics just... I don't know. It just doesn't feel like you're in the air when you jump in the air. And I think part of that is there's no jump bigger than a damn local vibe jump. <laughs> like, you know, some little local vibe jump you feel like you could hit on a 65. Like, that's what every single jump feels like in a milestone motocross game. So you have to, and it's not that, and I, I know they're making replica tracks. I get it, okay? But it's, you got to understand, it's a scaling issue, not a replication issue. That you can replicate a track all you want to, but it still not feel like you're really jumping big or like you're really getting in the air like you want to or like it would be in real life, you know. It just doesn't jump you high enough. It just doesn't have that feeling. You can be replicating it 100% correct all you want to, but it just doesn't have the fun factor, doesn't have the jump feeling, doesn't have the... You understand what I'm saying? And there's something with these milestone motocross games that just does not feel like you're really jumping. Like you're not really getting in the air. And it just feels like all of the time was put into the ground of the game, not the error of the game. Um, and that's what it feels like to me. You know, why not in your next game have some huge dune free ride map or something that's got like 200 foot? I mean, that should be in every single motocross game. I don't give a shit what anybody says. You need to have a free ride compound that actually gives you the ability to really jump big and do huge whips. And and we just haven't really had that potential in these milestone games. It's just like you've got all your default tracks, which may have a... 30 foot jump maximum <laughs> or 40 foot jump maximum on some of these tracks they feel small as shit and i know in real life a lot of those jumps get bigger like for instance you know and i know this is kind of a weird comparison but but a lot of the the american you know north american tracks uh with the the ama lucas oil pro motocross a lot of those tracks have some bigger jumps on them and i know some of the um like like a good example is the huge quad at uh you know, the Qatar track, right? You know, and, the, and then there's some other huge quads on some of these tracks that are like massive on some of the, even these MXGP tracks out there. Well, it, it's like for some reason in the MXGP games, it's like they just feel dwarfed. They just feel smaller than what they actually would feel like in real life, right? Like that right there, you can see the bikes in the air for, I don't know, a full second or two, two and a half seconds in the air right there, which is decent in the air time, but it just doesn't, I don't know how to explain it. feels like when you lift off of the ground, it's like you never even left the ground on a milestone game. Whereas like Reflex and some of these other motocross games, you really feel like you're in the air. It's like, woo, I'm jumping up in the air. But the milestone game is just like, okay, I'm just floating at the same velocity as when I was on the ground and nothing really changes. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but they just, they have not figured out the in error physics side of these milestone games at all. So they need to make massive improvements, and I don't know if it's just, you just need to beef up your tracks, you know, beef up the jump difficulty, beef up the jumps, kind of like you did with Monster Energy Supercross 2, the official video game. You've got to start making the jump aspect more of a fun factor, more of a fun feeling, and um, I'm not saying you have to, you know, make your replica tracks crazy fantasy or anything. I'm just saying it ain't going to hurt a damn thing to beef these jumps up like 25 50%. It ain't going to hurt nothing, dog. They're still going to feel like a replica. You know, it's not going to hurt that. But a lot of times, sometimes these arcade motocross games, when you really... Tr it's like they try too hard to make it one-to-one -one scale replica. And then you totally eliminate your fun factor of the game, right? A good example is some of those custom... Uh, replica tracks for reflex on PC. Sometimes people try to make those way too one to one scale and then they're just boring as shit. Like, and when you have a game like these milestone games where pretty much the entire game is just replica tracks and everything feels one to one scale, then there's no fun to the jumping of the game. There's literally none of it. Everything just feels small, dwarfed down, small, not as big fun factor as, as it 
void feel like and um, you just can't get away with that on an arcade motocross game like you can a simulator one-to-one scale like one-to-one scale on mx sim is actually fun because it's more difficult all the way around the board but with an arcade motocross game they're they're easy and you've got to have bigger jump fun factor to have that sort of feeling and uh like i'm saying you know if you don't want to get too wild with your replica tracks go in there and like i'm saying make a fun free ride compound with huge jumps on it why not have that in the game why would you not have that in there doesn't make any sense oh maybe because your uh, whip physics and rider in air physics can't handle jumping that big oh maybe that's the issue (laughs) yeah maybe that's why milestone hasn't put any jumps over you know 35 feet in any of their motocross games oh yeah now it makes sense it all makes sense dog (laughs) oh shit uh but yeah listen milestone i rip you a new one just for fun you know don't take it to heart but i'm just trying to make your games better like that's all i'm trying to do out here dog you got to understand man um it's not a hater mentality it's a let's make motocross games great again mentality you know i mean a lot of people get that twisted and confused but uh it's like dudes i'm just telling you things that'll make your game more fun that's all i'm trying to get at uh i think and even going to like a lot of a lot of the milestone motocross game issues they've had for a long time they still have so like for instance the not having a whole lot of inside rut options in the corners makes a lot of their tracks just feel so one-dimensional you just feel like you're blowing the outside berm out on every single corner of every single mxgp track makes the tracks themselves feel super similar to one another so there's like there's no difference right you feel like you're just on the same track with a different skin on every single track of a milestone supercross or motocross game that's damn near what it feels like so if you don't have a track editor or you don't have like these really cool unique super big jump free ride tracks or like your own well hell why not just go in there and make a couple of your own little motocross tracks make a little track on the moon or something fun like that or not even that just go make your own little tropical or whatever kind of track that's got some big like 100 foot tabletops on it or some cool shit that really gives you like a different feeling than just your everyday standard and even on top of all that what makes it so much more repetitive is this is all that milestone makes and they make it twice a year so it's like on top of everything else of riding on the same tracks over and over and over the same shit same jump same corner blowed out corner no rut no inside ruts jumps are lackluster um you know, all that kind of shit. The whoops are not difficult at all. Rollers are, are nothing to them. You just hammer the throttle. On top of all that, in that one particular game, the next game is going to be the same shit. <laughs> you know, the same over and over and over replicated tracks. Same, 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 same. And then the next game, it's like the same thing over and over and over. They don't add anything more to it. Like I'm saying, they don't add that cool, huge jump free ride compound so you can really test out the big jump in air physics or that really cool custom a uh, custom filling like a uh, track editor piece that you can really make your track feel totally different with or whatever you know they just it just doesn't really have that so then you got that not only repetitive nature of that singular game that you're playing a uh, track content but then it's like i've been riding on this shit for the past you know since 2014 mxgp the first game it's been the same shit for all of these years that's just the same stuff over and over and over and over you've got to make bigger improvements man you've got to start doing more with this or it's just gonna burn people plumb out you're gonna burn people completely out of your games there's really no other way to say it i mean that's all there is to it man you've got to start having tracks with inside ruts um you know you've got to start having like i said the more jump fun factor more of a breaking bump filling coming into corners that's another aspect of the milestone games are totally missing that you have like skill gap on mx sim or like uh, reflex in some of the motocross i mean they're rough you know that's what makes a motocross track difficult that's the skill gap that's the fun it's the roller difficulty it's the rut difficulty and it's the bump difficulty when you have a milestone game that basically has no roller difficulty, no inside hard ruts. Everything's like a blowed out sand rut. You've got pretty much, uh, you know, no braking bumps, hardly at all. And even if you did, they wouldn't be skill gap because like you guys know, the bumps and the, the rollers and the whoops and stuff on these milestone games, there's no skill to them. You just hold the gas down. You're never going to wreck on them. So there's no skill to that side of it. The jumps are lackluster, so you don't have any jump skill. It's just missing the skill it's missing the fun factor in that sense it's missing like what makes motocross fun and what makes these games fun it's just missing all of those 
integral, integral, <laughs> let me see if I speak some English here, boys, uh, you know, parts to these games that makes real life riding so fun and challenging and skill gapped to make you want to come back and play it. It's like a lot of these milestone games just completely are missing those gameplay elements that you expect, you know. But it's got the graphics, guys, you know. Uh, you can play as Eli Tomac, right? And then, of course, you know, Johnny PP Pants pisses in his pants over that aspect of it and then doesn't even see the gameplay issues and the track building issues and stuff. Are they stepping in the right direction with Supercross 2, the official video game? Yes, they are, but they're literally tiptoeing in their Jordans and a half. Like, they're not making leaps. You know, they're not really making steps. They're tiptoeing in the right direction. And some things go backwards, and then they have to update it and fix it. And, you know, with the whips of Supercross 2, they had to update that and fix that. Um, and then all their weird, still their weird EA microtransaction, get every little penny out of you, use your mama's credit card type bullshit they got going on you know already of game uh, their games having so much lackluster content in general oh yeah then we're gonna make all of our other track content pay dlc <laughs> it's like dog you don't even have enough track content to begin with and then you're gonna make the the dlc paid charge dlc like five six bucks a track please bro you need to smarten your ass up on that because you're looking stupid you're looking like People are losing a lot of respect for you by by going down those sort of business practices, you know. They really are, I'm just saying. But either way, guys, I mean, this is what starts to happen when you have these big gaming corporations start digging their hand down in the cookie jar trying to make a make a quick buck out of something. This is what happens right here. You know, they have the huge um I say huge, not huge, but you understand this is more of a triple A style company here, right? So that's why you get the graphics and the that more updated, uh, you know, Unreal Engine graphical system to everything. That's why you get all that, but you, you're not understanding when it comes to the gameplay elements and the uh, all that kind of stuff. It's not going to have like what a tried and true MX versus ATV game has in it in the in the the physics and the feeling of that, you know, it, it just, I just feel like they don't, they don't put the TLC in on these milestone games. It's like they just whip it up real quick and say, you know what, let's throw that official title on there and we'll make some money. You know, that's, that's what they're doing and they're getting away with it because you guys keep, keep putting this shit on way higher of a pedestal than what it deserves because of the graphics and because of all the official shit in it. And so they just keep making more money keep making more stuff and there's these new kids getting into motocross games and all they ever play is a milestone game don't even understand what a real like true good mx versus atv game is or a game like mx simulator heaven forbid you know and so they're not they're they're they got the blinders on man they're not seeing the full scope of the motocross gaming industry and so then it just makes this look 10 times what it actually is, right? But if you're somebody like me that's really put the time and dedication and you've played all these other motocross games hardcore, you will understand that this is not what people are making it out to be, right? And especially when the shit first came out, they've updated it. They had to. I mean, had to sit there and update it over and over and over. But when this shit came out, oh my God, it was terrible. And, it, you know, like the whips of Supergrass 2, the official video game, god awful, almost not even doable. I mean, I would I would literally consider the whips of Supergrass 2, the official video game, when it first came out, not even doable. Like, at all. They wasn't even so slow, the damn animation. Like, what the hell? How do you even let that be released? Like, that doesn't even make any sense. It reminds me of, like, when EA got a hold of the Battlefield series, right? And you got Battlefield 4 pretty much unplayable online and all the issues that had you know and some of these newer call of duties now that are just like stripped content all this bullshit it'll say like you'll go down to a certain menu in the game and it'll say this is locked off for a couple more months till we get it finished or like you know whatever or the the uh the battle royale of battlefield 5 not coming out till like four or five months later after the base game comes out come on you gaming companies need to get it together you're make gaming great again holy shit like why were the games twice as much content twice as much fun factor twice as much all of that back in the days of like you know the 2005 to 2010 it seemed like every game was twice as good then than it is now right and it's just so i mean you can go from the the call of duties right golden era 
Original Modern Warfare, World at War, Modern Warfare 2. That, that was Modern Warfare 2 in like 09 or something. I still think it fits in that like time category there. Um, all of those amazing Call of Duties. And now we've got like Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, you know, all this dumbass shit. P- pay to win guns and oh God, it's terrible. Same way with the motocross games. Back in 05, you had Untamed, Unleashed. Then you had Reflex, absolutely golden era of gaming. Reflex, just unreal level innovations to gameplay and movement on the bike and skill gap and track design and content. And then the whole PC Reflex with the on in the game track editor on PC, right? That whole side of it. Um, Those kind of games are the games that lasted decades. And here we are with some of these milestone motocross games and they can't even last more than two months. <laughs> and you've got all those other old school games that lasted decades or a decade at least, right? Like you can still go back to this day and play the original Modern Warfare or World at War or Modern Warfare 2 and have an absolute hell of a time. It doesn't even really seem like, oh, this super outdated old game, this is terrible, this is boring. No, what you think is like, what the hell's happened to gaming? That's what you think. And then when you go play like like Reflex or whatever, and then you look at some of these newer motocross games, it's like, what the hell happened to motocross games? And that's what I'm trying to get across. They just don't put the effort in now, and they're still charging you this big money price, and it's just not the same effort, and it's just sad, really. That's all there is to it. Make motocross games great again. Make games great again. Jesus Christ, what the hell is going on out here? I don't understand it. I don't. I really don't. It's just, it's pitiful. Um, and it, that goes that way with every kind of game, not just this. I mean, you could go to the, any kind of game out there. Um, you know, the, even the like NBA games and the NFL game, all that shit was way better back then than it is now. Um, Mortal Kombat. I remember like Mortal Kombat Armageddon. There's literally like a hundred characters that you could play in that game. And it had a character creator in the game. You could make your entire own custom, um, you know, fighter in that Mortal Kombat Armageddon on top of having literally like three times the amount of characters that you could play as, as like a, as like a modern day Mortal Kombat would have. It was just insane. Um, you know, you can make your own dude with his own moves and his own looks and everything. I mean, it's just, it is insane. The content strippage that has happened to games. Oh, going back to battlefields, even, you know, you had battlefield, bad companies, Battlefield 3, 10,000 times better than this new bullshit. It goes with every game, guys. It's happening with every game, and you're not realizing it's happening with motocross games. That's what you're not understanding. You know, you're not getting that in your head, but I'm telling you, it has happened with these motocross games. So, Milestone, you have got to wake up. You have got to wake up. Get rid of this bullshit DLC microtransaction crap. Put the content in we deserve. Get more of a, strip your physics down to a, to a base level, rebuild it, take a year or two off to make a game instead of making five games a year, you know, give us what the fans deserve, like, holy shit, I I don't understand this at all, but that's my opinion, so I'm hoping we can see better things in the future for these milestone games, I really do. Got high hopes for you. We gonna see. You know what I'm saying? So either way, appreciate you guys watching all the videos. Later, dudes.